it's uh, welcome everybody to another uh, webinar of our TFTC webinar series. Today I'm pleased and honored to introduce Dr. Jeff Ban from University of Washington. Uh, Dr. Ban uh, had received his uh, bachelor's and uh, master's from Tsinghua University in China and he also did his PhD and a master's in computer sciences in University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, Dr. Ban's research interests are in transportation network system modeling and simulation, urban traffic modeling and control and transportation, big data analytics. He is on the editorial board of several prestigious journals. And today he'll present uh, us our late, his, his uh, latest research on microscopic, microscopic dynamic traffic network control with drivers, broad choice behavior. Dr. Ban, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Rafeg, and uh, we're honored to uh, presenting, and also <laughs> through uh, um, um, uh, blue uh, jeans um, to uh, colleagues at Georgia Tech. Um, so this is some work um, we um, have conducted recently uh, regarding macroscopic uh, dynamic traffic network control. Um, so I think I chose this topic because at uh, Georgia Tech we have real experts on, on, on the MFD and uh, microscopic traffic flow and also on the dynamic traffic network modeling uh, two areas. So, um, so I'm hoping to get some feedback and some, uh, you know, potentially some collaboration on this uh, in, a, in, a, in the future. So um, uh, let's see. A quick overview of this. I did. I, I'm going to do some reviews of, you know, DTA and also um, the a particular, um, uh, you know, methodology framework uh, called DCS, Differential Complementary Systems, to model these uh, DTA problems. And then um, I introduce this uh, macroscopic network control. Also, you know, I call microscopic network control, but um, you know, in the literature. It's also called a perimeter control, as a, I think it's a specific um, problem of this macro level control um, um, a problem. So, um, and then I will introduce this DCS-based modeling approach for microscopic network control um, and introduce the models. Um, so I will then introduce the numerical experiment. It's still a little bit preliminary. I, I will ex explain what that means as we go and then ends with some co concluding remarks. Okay, so please stop me if you have any questions. Um, I'd be happy to entertain that uh, as we go. You start oh, okay, from there. so um, okay, we actually um, I'm here just um, trying to list some of the uh, you know give a very very brief literature review about this uh, um, you know uh, dynamic dynamic network modeling or control of traffic flow. It's uh, um, co conventionally, we call them DTA problems. Um, has DOE or DSO as two kind of principles to guide it to um, formulate the problem. It's a uh, very well studied uh, since 1970s. I started from this uh, uh, paper by Mer Merchant and Newhouser, um, 1978. I think one or two of them are from. I think one of them is from was from uh, Georgia Tech. Um, so uh, you know, over the years, there have been um, Many people working on this area. Um, I only can list a few, um, including um, uh, Dr. Peter um, and Dr. Zelaskoblis' uh, review paper in 2001. Um, that has been a very classical uh, review paper. So, um, over the years, people come up with, uh, you know, a slightly different focus, like analytical formulation, which I'm going to focus today, or simulation based. Um, these two areas, I, I would say, it's uh, very closely connected and. Uh, People, many people, like including me, are working on both both fields. So um, there are different methodology um, uh, to methodologies to sort of look at this analytical formulation. Uh, I, I'm listing here. I'm not going to go through the details. Um, I'm trying to. Oh, sorry. Let me do the full screen. Um, so um, there are two major distinct distinct um, component for uh, this uh, dynamic network modeling problems. Right? One is about people's behavior, choices, right? How many people make choices. Very kind of um, simple um, modeling of that. And another one is uh, about system dynamics, like how traffic dynamics can be captured. These two are different. So I'm going to uh, illustrate some of that uh, feature, like why of this is based on the link-based, link-node-based um, 
the uh, root choice behavior, right? How people make roots when they are in the dynamic network, right? So here you're looking at this uh, at time t, right? At node i, ij is a link, s is a destination. People trying to decide, oh, I'm at i, I'm going to destination s. Uh, should I choose this link ij uh, as part of my path or not, right? So you look at p i j s t is the inflow rate to this link at time t, right? So pi is a minimum time, minimum travel time from a node to the final destination. And pi j s is from j to final destination. So the basic idea is looking at this is say, oh, if I'm selecting link i j, so my travel time will be tau i j t, which is the travel time of the link, plus pi j um, from j to s, but at a later time, because you, when you enter the link, you need to tra traverse the link by tau ij, and when you get to node j, it's t plus tau ij, right? So if the summation of these two, the tau plus pi j s, is equal to the minimum from pi from i to s, right? Then, which means link ij is on the minimum path. So somebody may choose this link, which means pi, the p here may be non-negative. So this can be represented as this so-called complementarity condition, right? So this means perpendicular, like this term on the left-hand side and right-hand side, their product is zero. So so this perfectly captures the situation, which means if tau plus pi is strictly larger than pi r s t here, which means this link is not on the minimum pass, um, then uh, sorry. Um, then this p has to be zero because the, the product has to be zero, and this one is strictly larger than zero, right? So on the other hand, if these two are equal, then p can be uh, positive, which means if the link is on the minimal path, then somebody will probably pick, pick this, this link to the final destination, right? So this is to capture, as one scenario, the root choice can capture the using this sort of complementary condition to capture the um, their behavior. Um, dynamics is, is, I think, probably more familiar, uh, is a physical process, right? So here, you're looking at one link, right, from link i to link j, right? So this is the inflow p, and v is the exit flow, x is the number of vehicles on link. And if you look at for at each node, right, uh, uh, this in, interest i or j, you look at the cumulative inflow, right? So the, to the number of vehicles entered in link or exit from a link, these two curves, right? If you look at a vertical line, and the difference is that we calls or people have entered the link but has not exact, right? So the difference is the number of vehicles on the link, which is x. Okay? Then you can represent that as a dif uh, differential equation, right? So the changing rate of number of vehicles on the link is equals to the inflow minus the exit flow. So that's one. That's called mass balance, right? Um, another one is to look at uh, flow propagation, like the flow entered at t. The travel time is tau, right? So they exit at tau, t plus tau, right? So the cum cumulative inflow by t equals to the cumulative exit flow by t plus tau, right? So if you represent that as a you know integral of your terms, then you basically can represent everything by this, like exit flow at a later time equals to the inflow, but divided by one plus the derivative of travel time over t, which means if travel time doesn't change, then the inflow becomes exit, uh, ex the exit flow at a later time. Okay, so you can see that um, essentially, if you look at these two uh, distinct components, right? So you, you have to capture people's choice behavior, which is you know behavioral uh, or and dynamics, right? So but one of them often represented as equilibrium or optimization problems. It's more optimization, right? So as a behavior side to capture this behavior. Um, principles. On the traffic dynamic side is a physical process, often a dynamical system with delays, because we can see the delays due to the travel time, right? Um, or it's a PDEs or ODEs, right? But what's the mathematical framework that capture both, right? Because these two are very distinct, and people oftentimes study them separately in separate field. Um, so, and uh, recently this is recognized that maybe this can be reformulated as a DCS with time delay, which I'm going to introduce what that means, right? So it's uh, um, uh, uh, two lines of uh, you know um, research on this. One is by Pong, who's at USC, um, and Stuart uh, in 2008. Um, Stuart is from Iowa State. They published a review paper, a very long eight-page review paper about this uh, DCS. Uh, again, let's, let's give the, the full 
um, of this so that you can see this is, is differential complementary systems. DVI is a differential variance inequality. It's basically dynamicize the um, VI or OCP that we familiar with in a static case, right? So add the time domain. And uh, it's uh, also by um, Dr. Terry Fris from Penn State. They also, they also um, have a paper and also books talk about these differential games or differential VIs. And that's um, the, the reason we think um, DCS is a proper framework for DT problems to capture these two components is because of the DCS uh, form. If you look at uh, uh, you know, a classical definition of the DCS, right, it's a, actually an ODE, um, but it's add this complementarity uh, uh, component, right? So you have an ODE, it's a dynamics, right? You can think about your traffic flow dynamics. Um, but at any time t, you should have a complementarity satisfied, which you can consider as a root choice conditions, right? So that essentially captures the two components of of DTA that we we concerned about. That's why, um, you know, you know, as the form, you can hopefully can understand that this is suit, suitable for the for for the DV problem that we just talked about, and. Uh, um, of course, this is a special form of DVI. You can see all the details in this review paper. Um, particularly, um, a DCS with a special structure, as I listed here. So this structure is as, um, it actually give you um, look at you know the dynamics is linear on the U. So you can consider the X as your state variables of your system and the U as the control variables of your systems. So the U, the uh, dynamics is linear on U and uh, all your control and uh, the complementarity is separable on your U variables with your control variables. So this type of uh, special formulation can be uh, easily analyzed and solved, right? So that's uh, some of the uh, DOE formulations we studied have this form and can be, you know, we can use some of the methods um, in Pond Stewart in 2008 to establish the solution existence and, and convergence, um, you know, conditions for the model. Um, so I'm not going to talk in very detail about that due to the time constraint. But if you're interested, we can we can certainly talk more. Um, just conceptually, uh, uh, why the DOE is a DCS form, and you can see um, it's essentially this is a, a mass balance dynamics, right? It's called the number of vehicles change. This is the trial time uh, changes. Uh, it's related to the inflow and exit flow. It's a flow propagation. You reformulate that a little bit, and then you have these uh, root choice conditions. You have this uh, Flow conservation conditions at the node, right? So those you have this dynamics and you have the complementarity with the initial conditions, right? That those are you know in a at least in a formulation, right? So in a form, it's it has this DCS uh, formulation, but we do have time delays, and if you deal with this delay directly, it's actually pretty challenging, right? So we we that's why depending on the dynamics, so tau here the trial time, trial time depends on the dynamics. The traffic flow models you use, you essentially can hopefully simplify this um, to a constant delay. That's the that's the uh, formulation that we can deal with um, uh, so far. Like we can deal with the DCS with constant delay that can fit into some of the DOE formulations that we can solve and analyze properly. Okay. Um, so um, I give a little bit more literature about what has been uh, been done recently um, in. Uh, started to, to 2010, I think uh, uh, Terry had this paper about dual time on DOE, and then in 2012 we have this, uh, this instantaneous DOE with point Q models, and then there's more, um, you know, development after that. Um, so this paper I highlighted here, we published 2020, is about uh, look at the microscopic uh, view of the networks and then apply parameter control, but also try to integrate the DOE principles into that. We try to combine the two together in this DCM, DCS framework. Um, so, um, but the challenge is, as we see the, the, you know, the classical kind of DOE or DTA is both theoretical and computational, right? In terms of theoretical is the time delay divided by DCS. In general, uh, if it's a time variable delay, it's really hard to analyze and solve. We need more theories um, new series to deal with those uh, problems, but computationally, the real-world um, applications are large-scale, right? Um, if, it's, if it's a large-scale with 
with time domain, it's really um, some uh, oftentimes is uh, the dimension of the problem can be huge. Um, here, I'm only give you a very small scale real problem, right? This is from uh, a network in Japan. Um, only have 76 nodes, 100, 106 links, 160 links, and 26 destinations. Um, it's a very small, you know, like C force, right? It's a very small scale problem. But if you formulate using the classical, you know, the, the node, the link, OD pair kind of uh, formulation, it's you need to solve about uh, 100,000 linear complementarity problems. Those are uh, similar to the linear optimization problems, right? So they're small scale, but they have like 100,000. So it takes time to solve. You, you can imagine if you, this is a downtown Seattle network, right? We have 700 about, uh, nodes, 200 links, and 1,800 OD pairs, right? So you can imagine the, the, the problems getting harder, uh, larger and larger. And uh, if you even talk about a bigger network, you know, we know there's Chicago uh, regional networks, there's there's Pennsylvania networks. Uh, here we have, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, King County network, which is including Seattle and Bellevue, which is on the other side of the lake, um, as a, as a um, you know, two major cities. It has 15,000 nodes, 48,000 links, and half a million OD pairs. If you try to apply this traditional, you know, link node, the network kind of formulation, it's, it's you can imagine it would be challenging to solve uh, computationally, right? So that's why um, you know um, people started to look at the macro level control. And in, in, as a matter of fact, if you look at traffic transportation systems, it's a multi-scale system, right? So you look at the individual vehicles, right? If, if you think about Tesla, they're concerned about how to control their vehicles, right? Looking at using cameras or later to collect data and then try to decide their lanes and speed and everything of their vehicles. It's a vehicle control, right? They have vehicle dynamics. They have to concerned about and things like that. But if you go a little bit higher, look at your traffic systems, you have traffic lights, you try to control that to so that the system can be more efficient. Then you go into the, you know, more lo local level control, like traffic signal with vehicles. And it certifies, you know, if you look at traffic dynamics, it's a fundamental diagram right? that you're all familiar with, like flow and density, how that change over time. Um, so, but if you go a little bit higher, then look at the entire network, then you, you could divide that into small regions, right? And then try to decide, oh, how should I meter the in and out flow between the regions so that I can balance the flow, right? Uh, within the region so that the congestion is not too bad, right? So this is essentially what I hope to offer some insight uh, in this talk about regional control, or macro level control. Um, so we know that it's, if you look at the regional sub-region of your flow, you, you can describe that using MFD, um, which I'm uh, hopefully give you a little bit more on that. Um, so, but for these multi-scale systems, you have to look at the dynamics, interactions within within each level and also between different levels, right? It's not an easy problem. Um, so uh, it's, you know, essentially you can divide the entire transportation systems natural control as this multi-scale control. Um, so MFD, right? So we, as I mentioned, we do have an expert, <laughs> um, um, uh, Dr. Lawell here um, as an MFD expert. So I, I wouldn't uh, talk too much on that, but, but just uh, give you a quick overview. This is essentially, if you, are, you have a homogeneous region in your transportation systems, then you can, um, similar to the fundamental diagram, you can look at this whole region and look at the the, the number of vehicles in a region or the vehicle, uh, you know, uh, density in a region, and then um, look at the production uh, rate or the number of vehicles exist from the, from the uh, region, right? So that follows this similar to the FD, right? Fundamental diagram, it's a, called MFD. Um, so, so as you have more vehicles in a region, the, you know, exit flow uh, from the region is getting increased, uh, but once that's not congested. Once the region gets congested, then and you have more vehicles, you know, jammed in the region, then the outflow gets reduced, right? It's similar to the uh, congestion, no congestion region in the single, you know, point on the traditional fun fundamental diagram. Um, so, um, so in, in, because of that, if your region, if you can divide your region into your uh, entire network into these regions, and uh, you can meter the in and out flow between the regions, then this is lead to the so-called uh, parameter control, or I call it macroscopic uh, natural control, 
um, essentially, this for example, you know, I arbitrarily divided the San Francisco um, into different regions, then you can imagine how you can control the dynamics, right? So that's called a parameter control because you control the boundary flows in and out of a region, right? Um, so um, how, but what's your criteria to do the control or to do the kind of uh, in and out flow metering, right? So it, essentially, you know, here I'm using a more, uh, uh, you know, abstract form of the regions. Here you have 19 and the last one is more uh, like a core, the city core like Georgia, you know, the Atlanta's uh, downtown or Seattle downtown, whatever. And then you have these uh, urban regions and you have suburban regions, right? That's a mimic uh, a kind of a city. And uh, for any given uh, um, um, region, you can use this MFD, right? This is the total number of vehicles in the region. This is uh, the vehicle, uh, you know, flow uh, out of the region. You can understand that way. Then um, because of this, uh, you know, uh, concave form, then if you can, imagine if you can, this NJ bar is your kind of uh, threshold uh, vehicle um, concentration in your region, 4,000, for example, right? So which means if I can have less than 4,000 vehicles in my region, then my congestion should be good, right? So it's not very congested. But if I have more than 4,000, then I'd be in bad congestion. So I try to avoid the right-hand side of the region. I try to keep the number of vehicles in my region within this 4,000. That's called efficient range control, right? I try to control my the number of vehicles in each region falling in this efficient range by metering the in and outflow between every region, uh, any two regions, then I hopefully can, you know, if I can reach that, um, then achieve that, then I probably have a good congestion in my region, right? So, or not congested in my region. So that's sort of the um, uh, MFD-based control, um, you know, you know um, can be explained in this sense, right? So, again, this is not a new problem. I didn't invent this problem. It's, uh, you know, started 2013, sounds like, and many people have, have contributed to, to the problem, but typically we assume a, a, a network, a big network already divided into regions or sub-networks, right? Each with a well-defined MFD. That's a big assumption I have to make. I'm not an MFD expert, but um, assuming that is done. Um, then you have demand, external demand from a region to another region. That's the demand within a region that's called internal demand or the background flow that you also need to consider. Um, then the we assume travelers know, let's see from Google Map, we know the instantaneous, like what's happening now, and then make choices based on that information, right? So um, what we did is essentially try to add this, uh, you know, DOE component to capture root choice, right? And with this MFD control, uh, or the re efficient range control uh, to into one framework. I think that's our only contribution is in this, in this field. Uh, or in this talk, at least. Um, so, and to try to illustrate the major, um, you know, components uh, in order to um, Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. Hello? Sorry. Okay, okay. I have two kids. I have two kids, um, uh, you know, doing online schools and the, the, <laughs> the connection might be an issue. Apologize for that. Um, I think I'm, I was on this. Um, I'm trying to, um, I don't have 51 uh, pages uh, of slides, so don't worry. Um, so I'm trying to illustrate uh, what's, uh, do I mean by the perimeter control or the macro level control and with try to identify the major components um, that I need to capture, right? So, for example, again, in this San Francisco example, I divided the region, imagining somebody, maybe maybe Dr. Lavo or maybe uh, Nicholas um, <laughs> or maybe somebody else, divided this region into 13 regions. Um, then I'm trying to capture from the origin is one, destination is 11, right? People can 
Now the rule choice or the choice is about which region I'm going to tra uh, traverse in order to get to my destination, right? I don't care about in this level of modeling. I don't care about the detailed, you know, the turning of my cars at the next next intersection or the link the uh, nodal links I am uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm traversing. It's not like Google Map, right? It's more like a macro level or large scale kind of high level uh, guidance, right? So which ne neighborhood I should go through? So I could go, for example, let me try to here. Um, you know, I go this path, right? I go one, four, seven, nine, and then eleven, right? That's one. But this is my path A. But when you traverse the um, regions, is okay. But when you get to the boundaries, because you do the control, right? So it's usually uh, the vehicles may get queued up, right? So we need to capture the queuing and also delays at the boundaries, which you know I'm using these solid bars to show that, right? So that's the queuing aspect of that right so that's you can if you know the trial time you know the queue delays and you know the trial the trial time of the pass and then you can decide if that's the path you want to go you can of course do another one b right but because you do the um, parameter control right so if the for example between five and six you discover six have too many tra too much traffic in the region so you wanted to meter close my bo borders <laughs> close my borders so i don't allow or allow very small number of vehicles get in then you can imagine the queues and delays over here will increase, right? On the five will increase a lot. So people may go to another boundary, which is, you know, between five and 13, which has a more, uh, a, a, you know, a, a large uh, flow allowed into regions and then it's a, a sort of delays, right? So that's sort of the, the, the you can imagine in the root choice um, behavior and how that root choice is going to be connected with the queuing process and also the, uh, the, um, the, the, the parameter control. There's four major questions, right? So one is how you estimate trial times, right? So what's the trial time traversing region, which you can estimate that from MFD. Um, how about delays at boundaries? You need to have some queuing process, right? At the boundaries, we use point queue, which I'm hopefully to explain why, um, but we can use that point queue model to um, capture the delays. And root choice, as I mentioned, we use the uh, dynamic user equilibrium is basically instantaneous, which means I'm only look at, look at what's happening now to make my choices. And the control measure, of course, if it's a efficient range control, right? So in you know, the next couple of slides, I'm going to explain the, the, these four major problems with one or two slides for, for each, so it wouldn't hopefully take a lot of time. So for the MFD modeling, um, first, in order to capture both the M MFD dynamics and also the the boundary queuing process. I sort of, uh, you know, we model the, um, uh, the the boundaries between they say region I and region J using buffer zone, right? So we basically say, okay, uh, region has a buffer zone as a boundary. The buffer zone actually establishes this queuing model, uh, queues. You have you can have queues as the buffer zones that people, you know, vehicles can queue up and try to be ready to you know, enter the next region, right? So for the rest of the region, it's follow the MFD dynamics, but for the buffer buffer region, it follows only the Q um, process. We use point Q, right? So um, that's sort of the, you need to, of course, model the uh, traffic flow transferred from your, you know, uh, regular part of the region to the buffer. That's what we're going to show um, in this slide, right? So first, um, the MFD, uh, because it has this, you know, um, dynamics like this use the p p function as this is to show the MFD curve. Um, this 4,000 or the n uh, bar is the you know the threshold of the efficient range. So um, the relationship of this fundamental diagram can be represented as CIT, which is a trip completion rate. You can understand that as a you know the rate of vehicles get you know exit from the region, right? That's CIT. So it's a PI divided by L. As a, L is an average uh, trip length, right? So we we use this divided by LI because you know actually the this y axis should be C times the the you know the the, the L, right? So um, so but in any sense you can estimate the exit flow from a region based on the fundamental diagram uh, MFD, and if you have that, then you can estimate also the travel time that like. Uh, the vehicle traverse the, the region will spend n divided by c, which means the number of vehicles in the region divided by the exit flow from a region. It's more like uh, you know the the q divided by the capacity sort of thing. Right? So the, it's it's uh, 
estimation of the travel time traversing the region. So if you have that, um, then you also need to look at the dynamic. As I mentioned, right, so the region will have inflows to the region, right? So V, which means the flow transferred through region I from other regions. You also have D, which means the uh, traffic that will or demand generated from D to the destination, right? Not the internal demand, but external demand. And also the P is a time, what's, how much flow will be transferred from my regular part of the region to the buffer zone in order to join the point Q, right? So that's need to be captured. So this can be captured here, right? So that's the, you know, how the region, uh, the number of vehicle changed in a region is actually the yins to the region, um, either Vs or Ds, right? That's the flow entered into the region uh, minus the Ps, which is transferred to the point Q, okay? <clears throat> so with that, you can also divide that into different destinations, right? So if you have the total, then you can sort of estimate the destination based um, you know, flows from there. Um, and also on the boundaries, we use point Q. I mean, this is a classical um, concept. I hopefully wouldn't take much time. So it's essentially on, re on regular link, what you're trying to do is, you know, um, a link transfer, uh, enter into the link, then uh, tra uh, travels at a free flow time. You know, it's a tau zero, tau edge zero is a free flow time. At the end of the link, it's queued up vertically, which means the vehicles wouldn't take any space. And then it's exit from the link, uh, from link, right? That's the process. And so you can formulate the, the change rate of the queue as this, depends on how the inflow is larger than the exit capacity or not, right? So that's sort of the process. And uh, you can also calculate the exit flow and the travel time from there. So an important aspect is this U, right? This U is, um, so, in order to apply to the parameter control, then the U has a new meaning, right? Because when you when the point Q formed at the boundary, how much flow can be can exist it depends on the control um, scheme, right? Or your efficient range control. So this U is a in the classical point Q model is a you know is the exit flow capacity, but in this formulation is an exit flow capacity that determined by the efficient range control. And the U bar is your you know, threshold, like in the best case, what you would allow. So you'll see this connection of these two in the next slide, hopefully. And then once you have this whole flow, then you can also decide the destination based flow, which I wouldn't um, talk too much. Um, um, so the IDE formulation, um, it's actually can be represented as this complementarity. So um, the first one shows, okay, when I enter, when the flow enter into the region, I need to decide which boundary I want to join. Um, that's also decide which next region and the path I'm going to join uh, for my, you know, for my um, for my root choice, right? So this theta is de describes. Oh, once I enter into the region, uh, the you know this to the destination D, what's uh, how much flow I wanted to uh, wanted to um, uh, uh, transfer to the next region J. And the complementarity, the root choice means similar as I showed for the classical one is. Basically, the the flow, this flow, theta will choose the path with the minimum travel time. Okay, so this part is a flow conservation, similar to the classical one, and uh, the travel time here, tau is the travel time, can be two parts, right? One is the time to traverse the the region I, which can be estimated from MFD I said earlier, and also the Q delay at the boundary, which is the Q divided by the capacity. The capacity is determined by efficient range, right? So that's, the U has an important meaning because it's related to the control scheme, right? Um, and also notice that U is in the denominator, so which means, you know, in a numerical sense, U cannot be zero. So this leads to how we determine the, um, the uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the capacity or the, you know, maximum capacity that allowed by this uh, efficient range control. Um, so here, we again kind of um, ref, um, recall that we try to control, uh, you know, decide the maximum allowed uh, flow rate into a region based on the NGR bar, which is a threshold, right? You wanted to keep everything on the left hand side. So essentially, I, I first talk about this U prime, right? U prime 
uh, would be u bar, which means the maximum allowable, given it's a fixed value. If um, if this nj is the, actually the number weak in the region, nj bar is the threshold, right? If, if this the currently the number weak is less than the threshold, then you allow you know the maximum uh, meter, right? The meter is on, right? Okay, the, the you know you allow the weak to enter without um, uh, much um, restriction, but if it's um, if the number weak in the region larger than or equal to the threshold, then you say, oh, I'm close to my borders, basically, right? I wouldn't allow much. Uh, actually, I wouldn't allow anything to enter, right? So it's a boundary control, you know, bound bound control, right? If you have less, uh, I, enable, I open the gate. If you have more, I close the gate. So essentially what the U bar is. So um, mathematically, it's hard to deal with this if and then conditions, right? So, but you can see mathematically, it's equivalent to this optimization problem, right? So you maximize over y, this term, y times this, right? And, uh, um, but subject to this constraint. Um, in the paper, we showed y, this is equivalent, right? So you can actually pretty easily uh, uh, val um, uh, validate that. Um, but because this is over y, uh, it's a linear uh, problem, right? So y only appears in objective. So all these n and nt's are given Given parameters, so it's a linear um, uh, maximization problem. You can use the KKT conditions, right? KKT conditions essentially uh, by introducing some um, um, uh, the uh, multipliers lambda and mu, you can so th this can equivalent to this uh, complementarity conditions, right? And also mu, right? That's the formulation. And after you have this KKT conditions, then the U prime can be represented as this form, right? So essentially, you can um, what I'm trying to say here is your efficient range control scheme or idea can be reformulated at least complementarity, right? So that's for the U prime. That's strictly, uh, you know, bound bound or bound binary, right? So if I have, if my number we could not reach the uh, the threshold, I open the gate. If it's reached, then I close the gate, right? That's very very kind of uh, strict. But notice that if I use U prime directly in the formulation it will appear in a denominator and equal to zero will give me problems. So as an engineering, uh, you know, kind of remedy to that, I, I add a epsilon. Epsilon is a very small, like 10 to the minus four, right? A very small number so that even U prime is zero, then epsilon is not zero, right? So that's sort of the, the idea of that. Okay, so I explained hopefully the four major components um, based on you know, different other dynamics of behavior side, but if you put everything together, it's a, you know, MFT dynamics, right? I copy the formulations. Point Q, I copy the formulations. There's a root choice, I copy this complementary conditions, right? A DOE, I copy the KKT for the efficient range control, right? It's a fairly complicated, you know, you have this dynamics, you have this complementarity, but no matter how complex it is, you can think the two major component dynamics, it's essentially similar to the dynamics that we introduced earlier. It's an ODE formulation. Complementarity, it's about, you know, the complementarity between variables and the functions. You know, nothing more than this. It just have multiple of those in each, in each category, right? So it's essentially a DCS, which introduced earlier, without any delays. Actually, it's a pretty nice formulation. So we managed to eliminate delays by introducing the point Q and by looking at the instantaneous um, you know, the rule choice behavior, right? So that's essentially help us to eliminate the delays in the formulation. Okay, so um, so another maybe, I, I need probably five minutes to, to finish. Um, so we have, because it's a classical DCS, we can use the, you know, standard um, method to, to look at that. Um, so the formulation is continuous in time. Uh, oftentimes you can solve it in continuous time, right? So we need to discretize, but Discretization, oftentimes, um, we do very naturally, you know, in very intuitive ways, but often, sometimes you need to be careful about how you discretize. It's a forward or backward scheme, right? If you know a little bit of control, that has Im implication about stability of your model. And also the time step, you know, how big you should choose the time step, okay? So I think oftentimes we just random, right? A second or a minute or five minutes, right? So whatever we like, but actually it's, it has a, a way that may influence your stability, right? So in our previous papers, we discussed this in detail and we follow some of those uh, principles in that and then 
we can also try to establish the solution existence and convergence um, conditions for the model, which I, you know, it's in the paper, but I, I, I skip here. Okay, so um, that's the, um, hopefully, uh, you know, the formulation of the, mo uh, you know, the, the, the model, right? So different components. Um, here I'm going to give some numerical results. It's very pre preliminary and maybe disappointing to many of you because this is only hypothetical based on my hypothetical city, right? So uh, 19 is uh, downtown and uh, those six regions are the urban and then you have the suburban, right? So, but you can imagine in, if I do have a division of my city, I probably can do similar things like this, right? So I, um, I do need to um, uh, give the demand from between all the regions, right? So that why, why I have a demand table, right? So the demand table is only between regions um, in order to look at how my model or control scheme, uh, you know, sensitive to the demand, I have uh, three levels of demand, a light demand S1, moderate and a heavy demand, right? So that's how, how we uh, do some sort of sensitivity analysis. Um, so I wouldn't bother to show the light demand because that's um, the, the demand is too small. I saw moderate demand and also the high demand case, right? So I saw um, I compare two schemes side by side. One is with control, with my efficient range control. What's it look like? And without control, which means I you know open the gate all the time and allow you to in whichever you want, right? So um, this is this this. Two figures shows the number of vehicles, right? As time goes on, the number of vehicles in each region, the 19 regions. Okay, so uh, you some of the lines almost uh, you know uh, overlap. That's why you, you see uh, not too many lines. But with the control, I use 4,000 as a homogeneous threshold for the number of vehicles in the region, right? How many vehicles you allow? Recall that threshold like divide into the congested and uncongested region. So you can see with control, I sort of managed to control many regions, number of vehicles capped, cut by 400 um, vehicles, but there are also a number of regions, mostly on the uh, suburban regions, you know, they have much fewer number of vehicles because people wouldn't. I'm trying to model the going to the downtown, right? So oh, I forgot to mention that. I'm trying to model the morning commute, right? Everybody tried to go to downtown, which is 19. Okay, that's the demand. Um, so. Um, so the suburban regions wouldn't have a lot of vehicles, but you can see the urban and then um, the uh, downtown part has more, but you, you cut that, right? But if you don't have control, then some of the regions can grow to 7,000, which is way larger than what you preferably to have, okay, which is 4,000. Um, this one shows the same, you know, side by side with control, without control. It's more like a, how the traffic concentration and also the... Uh, sort of like a root choice behavior, like, like um, you know, at the very beginning, as time goes on, this is T at the beginning and then at the end, right? So simulate from one second to 5,000 seconds, so the whole entire morning commute. So at the beginning, you know, the first four figures, uh, at the early stage, um, you know, it looks like the same, but as the congestion builds up, um, you can see with control, you have more spread out root choice, right? You The flows try to, uh, pick, you know, for this one, for example, for this region to the downtown, instead of going straight, you basically try to go to the next and next and next, take a long detour, get to the um, final destination, which is the downtown area. This is help you spread out the demand among all the regions, right? So uh, similar for this one. And, uh, you know, in the end, the downtown wouldn't have a lot of concentration because you try to divert traffic, but if, without control, because you allow vehicle to in without any limitation, you can see um, the root choice is more direct, right? And uh, but the, the downtown is more concentrated and congested, right? Um, so this is a higher demand, you know, similar um, with the control you capped at 4,000, but without control you can go even some regions go even to 9,000 vehicles, which is way beyond the the you know the preferred number of vehicles in the region. And uh, root choice, so similar patterns, right? There, in the later part of your your, your commute period you could have even more spread out um, root choice behavior compared with no control. But the traffic is more spread out. Um, so that's the, you can see the, uh, from the root choice behavior. Um, this is the first table, so the performance improvement, if you have light traffic, you know, who cares, right? So the traffic is not too, mu too much, so you, the improvement is 
almost nothing. But if you have moderate demand, you have about seven percent increase compared with the you know with the control. The total the the congestion can be reduced by seven percent. If you have heavy demand, then congestion can be reduced by fourteen percent. And uh, the last um, the figure shows uh, you know the efficient range. I have this U bar like the maximum allowable inflow to my region. Uh, as you can imagine I'm trying to show uh, this is stress code and stress code goes from 2500 to 6500 vehicles per hour and uh, I'm showing the improvement in terms of system performance and also the, the queues right using the um, uh, on the boundaries we use a red red line right as you can imagine if you if a stress code is large right so you allow the vehicle all the um, cars to get in as much as you can then the queues can be reduced right um, but if you reduce this threshold, you basically meter more strictly on the boundaries. You can imagine the queues will grow, but the promote performance overall may may uh, increase because you force vehicles to pick other regions, which is less congested, right? So that's how you get this spread out uh, root choice behavior. So you have this trade-off, and uh, we pick around 4,000. Not that we have 4,000 for both. 4,000 for the number of vehicles as a threshold for MFD, and also 4,000 as a meter rate to the to the to the region. Right? It's just coincidence to be the same, but it's 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 different um, meanings. Right? So um, that sort of concludes my my um, my um, uh, presentation. There's a lot of future work to do, especially to get real data or simulation data at least to sort of testing this, which I'm very interested to. To learn more from my colleagues here uh, at Georgia Tech, um, this is my collaborators. I hopefully to uh, recognize their contribution, including um, you know collaborators at USC, at Michigan, at Madison, Wisconsin, also my former students, and especially uh, Chang Chang, who actually uh, is my student who worked with me on this particular um, particular work, um, and also this uh, work supported by um, different. Um, Funding, especially those from ISF. Um, with that, um, I hope I'm not over too much. <laughs> so I managed to get this done um, before nine um, or, or twelve. Your time. Um, I I'd be happy I'd to take. Be, um, happy to take. Um, <laughs> okay. Questions? Okay. Thank you, Jeff. That was a great presentation. Really, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Despite okay, this, let me try to uh, enable my audio. Yeah. yeah. So please feel free to ask questions in the chat or unmute yourselves. In the meantime, I had a, a clarification question. I didn't understand the travel time, um, the Q divided by U formulation. Maybe if you could explain a, a bit. I think it's in the uh, point Q, the line. Jeff, can you hear me? Looks like we lost Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. I can uh, answer your question. <laughs> oh, actually, great. Go ahead. So it's like a queuing system. It's uh, Q divided by the flow exiting. Wait, but isn't it flow divided by flow? So was, it was n divided by it was q divided by u u bar q i thought it was the flow and u and bar n, not q n no, no. the number of vehicles queuing right that would be the normal thing but it was q which is flow so um so roughly can you try to contact jeff yeah, I talked to him. He's trying to reconnect. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I talked to him. Yeah, with homeschooling and the kids, and it sucks up all your bandwidth. 
So Jack, what are you doing in ETH? I am on sabbatical. All right, good for you. Enjoying the life there? Yes, skiing. Oh, super cold down there, right? There's a cold wave. Minus five. Ooh. Tells you, huh? Hopefully we'll have our speaker back soon. Um, if not, maybe somebody that's uh, familiar with the work, maybe a co-author is here, didn't notice. So Jack, in the meantime, uh, what did you see? Um, I found it super interesting. Did you see any novel finding with respect to the perimeter control lit? Funding? Or, yeah, and the methodology. I haven't seen that applied to this problem. The DCS? No, the DCS is... Uh, I have several questions related to Jeff, but uh, the DCS is, is well known in, in, uh, in mathematics, in hybrid. Uh, Maybe Jeff Buck, in hybrid dynamic system, when you have this uh, complementary equation and you can reformulate it as a mixed uh, integer uh, linear programming, MLD system actually, a mixed logic dynamic. Right. In the and context so, of MFD, it might be the first time. Uh, in the context of MFD, no, oh, this is uh, oh, I can new. see. All right, we have our speaker back. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is, uh, Warsaw is hot, tough. <laughs> yeah, so let, let's make it quick before you, you leave again. So I had a question about the travel time. Um, I think it was the queuing system, so Q over U, U bar or something like that, right? Yeah, yes, yes. I didn't really well, get that part. Um, the, you're talking about the, the point Q, right? Point Q model, yeah. I guess. Because um, Q is zero, right? This flow divided by flow? The flow divided by capacity. So I sort of... Um, capacity is flow, uh, right? The Q, no, Q is... Uh, Q is... The, uh, no, Q is uh, Q, the Q. Q is... Uh, let me... Oh, uh, it's not a it's flow. It's a Q, Q length in vehicle. Yeah, it's a Q yeah. length. It's a Q length. It's Q length. That's, that's, exactly. that's right. Yeah, you're right, Jack. Oh, wait. Yeah, uh, Q length. Q is a... Q is a, a, Q a, is a before you define Q's of flow rates in another slide, so. Oh, um, so uh, I think this is how I, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, another slide, maybe this one. No, this one is, uh, is, uh, is this. Uh, no, sorry, um, it's uh, over here. Why it's, okay. So uh, um, here is the trial time is the number of vehicles divided by C. Um, it's also the call right. time. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is a MFD. This is the MFD. This is your domain. This is why I just copied from some paper. <laughs> yeah, but usually we don't call okay. it C. We call it uh, okay. Anyway, uh, can I ask questions? Oh, different. Uh, different? Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So a very interesting presentation. I have uh, several questions. So I don't know how, how much time I do I have. Uh, but uh, the first question is related to. Slide 21, which is critical for me, regarding okay. the uh, regarding the control. So okay. oh, you the, mentioned you mentioned one. that 21, the bank bank control. Oh, that's not 21. 22, that's maybe, 22, uh, 22, 22, 22. So here, yes. you assume you assume that the optimal control is a bank bank control, and this is congested. You apply a bound a one of the bound of the control and if it's not congested yeah. you apply the other one this is yes, perfect yes. this is correct for only one region and this is well known in the literature but when you have several okay. regions right. the, the, this policy does as, as at least in my research i show that it doesn't hold uh as an work. optimal policy okay uh 
so it doesn't work of because of because uh, when you um, have one region you can guarantee uh, that you can regulate around this n hat j and you can maximize right. the flow but when you have several mm -hmm. regions then you have several dynamics so you cannot keep all regions at the maximum value then because you have several type of regions several size of regions right. then you need a, a much more smarter way to do it and not a bank bank right. control um or at I... least it can be bank bank control but not this rule that you show here uh, when um, it is congested is uh, u bar when it is not congested zero or something like that uh-huh uh-huh well I, this um uh, let me take that first um i i think it's my have two layers to the problem why is um you know uh, as you indicated you know for one region you know it's it's uh usually understood you know this works right so your concern i think is for multiple regions you may not be able to achieve simultaneously this this policy or at least if you have too much traffic right so one region has to be on the <laughs> on the um bad kind of traffic situation right? yes and if you want yeah. to be precise even for one region does not always mm -hmm. hold because when you right. have control constraint minimum and maximum constraint and you, right. you do right. have such constraint on the boundary right. this one slightly changes uh right and, so i i think my my model has a, <laughs> has a trick or you can you can call it a problem is the point q is a trick um no the point have... the point q i agree it was a nice trick that you do point q in order to yeah. relax yourself from dealing uh, the, uh, on the delay at the boundary right. yes um yes. But, but not only that um, let me explain the point q actually allows unlimited uh, possibility to, to store queues to store vehicles so if you have too much congestion you uh, you know you wouldn't lead to the situation that you worry about because the extra vehicles will be in my queue so the question if it's really realistic this point q of course it's not no, you know nothing is uh is perfect right so the point q is just the one uh, approximation you can usually argue i totally agree which i showed in my previous papers on point q is if you have extremely congested situation point q wouldn't work um so but, you need a physical piece yeah that but, work. but jeff it's uh, it's a pity because the, the the bank bank control solution with not point q the, it is it's it is exists in the literature uh, yeah, so I, I, of course, I mean, the the bump, bump, bump control is a very, very classical um, control method. I, 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 I never claim this is something new from our work. It's just we apply this concept. Well, not me, right? As you can imagine, or you, you indicated in the literature, people have used this. We just try to integrate with uh, point Q, with uh, MFD control, with the IDOE root choice, these four components into one framework, which is DCS. Uh, that can be analyzed more formally. That's what I, I hope. That's the contribution that we, we try to do. Yeah, I understand. Um, but I sorry, maybe I rephrase my question. I claim mm -hmm. that if you take the solution from the literature for queuing dynamic, which is not point Q, you can still uh -huh. integrate it similarly as the way that you oh, did it here oh, in this slide. Yes. But with, uh, so with you... not point Q, but with with other uh, realistic yeah. model that yeah. takes into account the queue. This is <laughs> um, all my comment. Yeah, that's that's you know. Um, so I I agree. I wouldn't argue on that because you can see that um, part of my future research is to refine the trial time estimation from a point Q. Maybe would be like using more realistic Q uh, uh, models. But I would caution on that. Uh, not caution, but I would say. Doing that is not uh, it's not very trivial because once you have a physical queue, all of a sudden you need to worry about the space, the queue lanes, and uh, you know those um, will add uh, uh, not trivial complexity and difficulty to the model, which we had experienced before. 
um, we we have this uh, physical queue or the double queue or uh, this link transformation models for traditional, uh, you know, the link node based network type of uh, DTA problems. That's add uh, not so one, you know, it's not the same or, or trivial extension of the point queue model. It has a lot of difficulty, um, either technical or kind of like uh, the, the numerical part. So yeah, so in theory, I agree. That's the direction that we need to integrate. Maybe more realistic queues. I think the that's my um, kind of request to people in the MFD or the uh, literature is to really to think about the boundaries between the regions and what's the best way to model that. Um, I saw a paper by um, by Mike Cassidy in the previous um, STTT talking about some some aspect of that, but um, maybe I, you know I'm not following closely the MFD literature, but I think that's an area we need some. Maybe some attention. That's a call from, from a no MFD expert. Um, so uh, yeah, but can... the the funny the, the thing is that uh, I think you cite also one of my papers that integrate uh -huh. Uh -huh. integrate yeah. the queuing dynamics, and there we extend the solution. Uh -huh. But I wonder because this is a very interesting of. Uh, the DCS uh, that you explained, uh, complementary uh -huh. uh, framework, uh, because I, I know yeah. it from hybrid system, and as far as I uh -huh. remember yes. when I was a student, we could succeed to change the complementary system or complementary uh, constraints as uh, by adding uh, one or zeros, uh, the logic, uh, uh, condition uh, reformulated with the variables of integer, integer variables and solve mixed integer linear programming problem. Uh, did you try how you solve this problem here? Oh, that um, if you discretize, it's a it's a it's a it's a no it's called a no linear complementarity systems uh, problems. It's a classical optimization problem that people already have solved solution techniques for okay. that. Okay. So I see. Um, so you are right. So if it, the complementarity can be formulated as boundary binary problems, right? It's because that's that's again that's a, another way to to deal with complementarity. But uh, again, if you have binary variables, that's also another difficulty to deal with. And uh, with the OBEs, that's a different. You know, maybe you talk about hybrid systems. You know, the I think in control. Uh, that's why I, I always puzzled by. You know, the same problem, they studied in different domains by slightly different measure, but they never talk, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, in the hybrid control, this is exactly what you described. Maybe they have, you know, hybrid means you have continuous, discrete, and some other, you know, problems. They, they have a line of research on that. Um, DCS is, uh, you know, by applying mathematician optimization flux with, with dynamical system flux, then they put together this framework. Um, I don't think they never talked, um, <laughs> so that's that's a challenge for um, people who are more applied like us. We try to see what are the best measure to solve a particular problem at hand. Um, it sometimes can be confusing. Um, you know, to me, I, I don't I don't limit. I don't think this is the best way to do things. I think this, you, we allow this to encourage you know different thinking and different approaches. Um, this is just one way. Um, I I hope it's a more to me it's a more like a systematic way to look at different components and try to put them put them together. There's a you know theoretical formulation of paradigm that can help you to study those problems. Um, of course, with, without you know I, I wouldn't claim I I solved all the problems. There's a lot need to be addressed um, as well. Yeah, I know you are. Um, I you know I I I don't think we. Met in person, <laughs> maybe we did, but um, yeah, we but did a nice person, trip I, with I, you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I okay, thank that's you. probably the other. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, we you... keep the other for other questions. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you for the questions. Great. Any other questions to the audience? <clears throat> so, there are two questions in the chats. May I ask them? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So yeah, there's one question asking: uh, Is the discharge rate mu modeled as a constant? No, no, it's not. 
So that's another you could um, a, a, a problem that you could uh, try to address. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's U is uh, is uh, U is determined by the efficient rent control. So it's a variable. Mm -hmm. um, but but the the nice thing of the um, MFD control again this goes back to the to the uh, multi um, where I'm trying to show you that uh, it's. It goes back to the here, right? So it's a. Uh, uh, I hope this is clear. Um, so the U is a capacity. You know, you know, you know, classical sense of point Q. U is a given. We normally use capital C. It's a capacity, exact flow capacity from the link. It's normally a constant, right? But the U here, we try to say it's a determined by the efficient rent control. So it may change. Um, but the change is. If you uh, look at from a big picture wise of you, the uh, the parameter control is happens in a longer period of time, hopefully, right? So um, if you um, uh, put this into a multi-scale system, the MFD control on a region-based control is happens hopefully minutes scale, um, and then you try to link to the within region, you know, the more like the traditional link node, network type of control, signal control, and things like that. That happens in a more faster dynamics, right? Maybe in seconds. And then you talk about the vehicle control, vehicle dynamics, you know, the link changing and the California is in sub-seconds or even milliseconds, right? So it's a time scale is different and the spatial scale is different. Then, then that's, you know, hopefully um, that can help to explain some of the, some of the issues. But the, but the short answer is you here is a, is a variable. It's not a constant. Thank you for that. And there's another question from Weima. Uh, so the travel time consists of two parts: travel time in the yeah. MFD in the zone and waiting time at point Q. Yes, yes, yes. So true. I, true. I have another question myself. Do you uh, consider any impacts from those buffer zones into like the main region? Regular, yeah. Like, no. Any no, no, uh, that's, yes, yes. Uh, well, so the the trick again, um, I the trick is the point Q, right? The point Q actually hide some of the problem, or because the point Q wouldn't have uh, storage limitations. So so that for my model, it's not. That's you can blame the point Q, right? Um, but uh, realistically, yes. I think that's why I call for a, a model to sort of. Do the buffer or the boundaries? How to model that um, more? Like uh, obviously, you know, you can argue that the boundaries are different from the rest of the, uh, of the region, right? They are not the same dynamics, right? So how you uh, model the two properly and capture the connections? That's I, um, I, I'm not, um, I don't know. I mean, um, yeah. But if um, when the queues, the point queues. The cars there are considered in the end when you compute the travel time, or they disappear. The beginning, the beginning. That's the trick. Yeah, I think that's the theta here is when the when the vehicle gets into a region, the, it will decide immediately which boundary I'm going to join, as also my root choice, part right. of my root choice, right? Yeah. yeah. So, that's end, why. Yeah. so the end is the total number of vehicles in a region. Does it consider the cars that are queuing, point queuing? No, 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 no. So maybe it's no. So it's all. Maybe, maybe yeah, that's one way of incorporating. Yeah. So that uh, only, as you can see from here, so the the number of vehicles only um, um, maybe here. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah. So the n. Is the 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 number of vehicles we concerned about? Of course, I use I J, which you know going to J to this list and D, but but it's only, but it's only I do. I uh, so the piece is from my regular region to my boundary. That's the connection between these two components in my model. Only connection. So you don't consider it when computing the MFD travel time. Right. Um, the FMD travel time is computed by n on this regular region, regular, regular part of my right. region. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But why not include but the, the buffer vehicles? 
Uh, no, I don't com com include the buffer. Right, um, right. Yeah. So the buffer is only the point Q delays. Yeah. yeah but why, why, include the, why do you not include the buffer vehicles in N? Well, because the buffer vehicles, um, my understanding is they are, they are separate from the MFD dynamics, right? Because they are not the dynamics in a regular sense, because they are already queued in the, in the, in the specific yeah, but, mechanism. I mean, to me, it's a better compromise than just separating them. Because when you separate them, you, you say that they don't impact at all the region, but they do. Right. 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 So, right. might be a better way. So, Jorge, exactly. Yeah. This is what, uh, sorry to interrupt you, this is what we have oh. done. That this is one approach that you say it does not affect the region, but you can make it affected by some like maximum Q that you can allow. This is the approach right. that yeah. I yeah. did. It. But the other approach yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. That, that, that Jeff talked about is Mike Cassidy when he integrated in the yeah. MFD and affected the MFD. But there you need yeah. to assume some homogeneously queued or something like that and not like queuing in some buffers, and this is problematic dynamics uh, or modeling for the MFD because the MFD should be. <laughs> okay, okay. I, 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 see the, I see the argument. I, I totally agree, but I would say my way to deal with this is a simplification. You can, you can criticize it's not realistic, but it it's separates the two uh, in the sense that I, I can, I can, I'm comfortable to say MFD, the regular part is whatever the dynamics you have, but my point Q is a different dynamics. That's why I separate them. But if you yeah. say I have a physical Q, uh, let, let me finish. So if you have a physical Q, for example, you allow the maximum, uh, you know, storage capacity, whatever, but how you capture the connection between your regular uh, region with your Q and region. And uh, they are not homogeneous anymore. And your, your, um, your uh, MFD assumption may, may be in, in, in danger, right? Because the the interacting part uh, of yeah, of is, we, is not homogeneous, right? The, the whole region could not be homogeneous because of that. So um, that's why, you know, I honestly, I don't know what the best way to do it. Yeah, but do you, you do agree with us that uh, if you have, let's say, 10 vehicles waiting or 100 vehicles waiting, the effect mm -hmm. on the controller should be different. And yeah. also the MFD dynamics will be different. So here you need, this is the issue, the main issue with the point uh, Q uh, modeling, which, it, but in, on the other hand, you solve the very, uh, very sophisticated and very important issue. You solve all the deal, uh, dealing with the tau and the dynamics, which is yeah. uh -huh. the positive thing to do. Right, but right. Uh, still we have some yeah. issue yeah. to handle maybe <laughs> as a follow up research. Yeah, totally agree on that. I mean, this part is, is a, it's our simplification. It's our um, way of not knowing what's the best way to really capture this. I, I recognize this is a, this is an issue. Yeah, yeah, this is not. So yeah, we're not actually, this is a good time to plug one of our papers. So Rafa worked, we uh, published last year. That's why I made my question. Which is, to take the cell transmission kind of rule, the supply and demand oh, network. Okay. okay. So it's kind of a two dimensional cell transmission model. Uh, and so cell transmission, uh, you know, you know, um, in the uh, in, in the network level or only at the boundary level. No. So your um, hexagons there, that would be a cell. Oh, I That's see. Okay. Cell and the cell transmission. Okay. So maybe okay, sure. you can put the link uh, of the paper in the chat. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah. Right. Okay, so with the supply and demand framework, which I think we have the back still, maybe he left. I don't know. Okay. But, okay. Um, um, you don't. So you don't need to worry about the, the boundary issues in your cell transmission then. How you right, so the because boundary issues? Supply demand, that's the whole key. That takes oh, care right. of the boundary issues in the same way as in regular traffic, right? Where a wave, you know, propagates. Because 
the supply comes from the origin cell and the, uh, no, sorry, the demand from the origin cell and the supply from the target cell. Uh -huh. So you have the competition at the boundary. And okay. yeah, so I'll be interested in how it works in, in this case. Maybe. Yeah, then, then it would be uh, very difficult to integrate it in this framework, uh, Jorge. I'm skeptical. Okay. Um, yeah, but I think it's worth trying. Um, I take a look of your model. Yeah, I take a look of your model. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's super simple. It's just a two dimensional uh, cell. Okay. But in this case, you can go in six directions, right? So you're going to have six, okay. uh, six demands. So, and, yeah. Okay, so let me try. Okay, that sounds very interesting. Let me try to understand is the two dimensional uh, cell means you have uh, uh, the macro cells like the regions, and you also have the m yeah. micro cells at the boundary. Is that so you could do that, but then. What I'm saying is just uh -huh. one cell, uh -huh. the one hexagon is one cell. Uh -huh. You don't need uh -huh. to subdivide right. it. In. The one region is okay. one cell. Uh -huh. That could be one. Uh -huh. I mean, of course, you can keep subdividing okay. it. But uh, okay, so, I see, I see. But but you do capture the boundary. What I'm concerned about, or, yeah. or not understanding, is how you deal with the boundary, as we we just discussed here, right? Point Q is not certainly right. not the best way, but um, right because but really, offer some. Some, some, uh, the okay. same transmission rule is the minimum of the supply and demand, right? Oh, uh, okay. And, okay. And that's where the boundary comes in because the supply is from the target cell and the demand is from oh, the origin. I see. I see. So by taking the minimum, you only allow the flow that can actually pass. Okay. okay. And maybe by doing yeah, one cell being one region, maybe the formulation is not so difficult, Jack. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, I, I think it sounds very interesting. I'd be happy to follow up. Um, yeah. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Very good. Hey, that's, that's exactly why I cho choose this presentation, this topic, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I, <Super> <laughs> I, get, yeah. I know I get, get but, some good comments. But be careful. You. Be careful. Then definitely the bank bank control, simple bank bank control rule, will not, may not work. work. Yeah. May so not in work. my formulation. In my formulation, that may lead to infeasibility or something like that. Because you, let's see, you have too much traffic, you cannot hold. But basically, you even try to even spread across all the regions, you cannot hold all the traffic, right? That may lead to some infeasibility in the model. Uh, your model will fail, basically, right? So that's that's what I would imagine would, would happen. You still can hold. The rule can still work if you do the boundary of the bank bank. Uh, uh -huh. up and down you make it zero and some upper bound the upper bound upper bound and the lower bound should be function uh -huh, yeah. of the demand and the capacity that Jorge yeah. talks about yeah yeah but you cannot predefine those right so you can you could still um lead to the infeasibility sort of situation if you really have boundaries on the on the maximum number because you can hold right uh, it's yeah, it's yeah. not trivial. I don't know. I need to look at mm -hmm. it. Uh, I yeah. tried something on that, but it didn't work out uh, in mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jack, if it's not a bang bang, what what is it? Do you have an intuition of what the controller should look like? Uh, what do you mean the controller should look like? Um, I don't yeah, have. I actually, I don't have the... actually, I was asking Jack, yeah, because he said that oh. the bang bang might not be appropriate. So what what would be appropriate? Well, here, uh, when you have one region, uh, uh, and it's not probably, it's, it's proven that this is the optimal solution, but yeah. when you don't have uh, one region, you have multiple region, then you don't have such, let's say, a simple analytical solution or rule that uh, he, he, it is shown here in the slide uh, 22. Um, and if you have even, uh, changing demand, uh, then uh, for a multiple region, uh, it, it's a problematic to define uh, such simple rules of bank-bank uh, control. Uh, in, uh, I try to derive some, uh, some simplified rules for the same problem with, again, with the queuing or buffering queue, uh, but in order to integrate the effect on the MFD, 
I did it in a not direct way, claiming that I have maximum Q allowed. And then uh, the maximum Q allowed can change uh, the control and can do some, again, bank bank uh, control, depending on uh, this allowed buffer. So this is a paper uh, in, in ICCT in part B uh, 2017, I think. Uh, so there is some solution there, but but still, but still, it will become complex, and it will become depending on this uh, size of buffer that you assume. Uh, but still, for uh, one uh, region or two region, more than that, it, it will. I, I'm not. I'm skeptical about that. But I could argue that it should be bang bang. But considering the total inflow to a region, so maybe it's not bang bang between two regions, but between the middle region and all the regions in the perimeter. Maybe, but I don't know. But it should be because if the region in the middle is no, because because the middle the middle is connected to yeah. another regions, and then yeah. you need. And then, and then you have a lot of freedom in optimization in order to right. to make it more balanced or less balanced. So imagine that you have region with higher MFD shape and some region with lower capacity. Then you need to protect this lower capacity in any case. Uh, and the higher region, you can through to them flow not as a maximum play. This is the reason that it will not be bang bang. It will be derived from the other region. Oh, I see. Yeah, it gets a lot more complicated. Yeah, yeah, it's becoming more complicated, and we can see it. This is the reason that we use more advanced methods like MPC, interpolating control, or other. Uh, it's right. it's a really problematic to define this uh, line of added line of four thousand should be on the left. Let's say to maximize. To define it in advance for multi-region, it's a very non-trivial task, and there is nothing in the literature uh, that uh, that uh, describe uh, or define what are the pre uh, pre and hat should be over a region over regions when you have multi-region system. If you have one or two regions, can done, but if you have multiple region, it will be more complex. And this is why we go to numerical solution and we go for other other approaches. Okay. Oh, oh, are you talking about the U bar, right? I'm talking about N hat, not N bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I, it's hard to. Yeah. So maybe we can keep it as a as a just U as a variable. You know, not a bound bound control. <laughs> maybe that's. That's oh some kind of uh, different, you know, uh, a step kind of thing. I, I, that's make makes sense more complicated. But uh, again, the intuition the intuition says that if you want to protect this region with lower capacity, it will be on the bank bank control or minimum or maximum. This would be the ultimate solution because you need or to limit uh -huh. all the people coming or to max. But if you have right, right, yeah. regions which is higher with more capacity and uh -huh. other you can control a more flexible way, then it will be between the bounds. But how mm -hmm. the value, specific values, if you have a system with maximum Q links, then you can know these values because this is the mm -hmm. one that will uh, constrain the controller, not the zero and mm -hmm. the maximum value, but it is something in the middle. But if you don't have such a constraint, if you have like a function as Jorge said, minimum, maximum of the of the uh, demand and uh, capacity, uh -huh. then it will be more complex to define these uh, bounds corresponding to these uh, values. In, in, in dynamic way, again, yeah. we talk about dynamic way, we yeah. talk about a flow that changes time varying, it's not constant, then everything will be more complex. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So there's a um, question from the chats so let me ask mm -hmm. that. It's from Ali Zokai. Unfortunately, he had to leave, but if the students are still here, they can let him know your answer. So he asked, uh, I was wondering, 
in addition to demand level, what was the demand profile? What was the demand profile? Um, gosh, I, I need to... Uh, uh, yeah, we try to... Oh, yeah, the demand profile. I think we have this here. Uh, not the it's a demand level the profile gee I think it's constant if I'm I could mis be mistaken I need to read the paper uh, look at the paper I it's been a while um, it might be constant numbers um, but I need to double check that okay, thank you yeah excellent that was a good discussion guys thank you very much thank you thank you Jeff. Time. Thank you. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Nice discussion. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. When is our next uh, talk, Rafa? So we'll have another presentation next week at the same time next Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time by Ali Zokai of Michigan State University. Great. And Jeff, maybe then, then you can uh, answer the question about the demand profile to him. <laughs> Good. Right. Email. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Yes. Thank you guys. Next week. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you, Thank you Rafael.